Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12. And in this video, we're looking at creating spell effects. And I don't mean animation effects. I mean, when we cast a spell, it actually has an effect on the target. Because not all of the core uh, SRD spells actually do what they're supposed to do. So what we're going to be looking at specifically in this one is the spell Levitate. So I'm just going to make sure I'm going to delete that version. I'm going to pull one direct from the SRD. So we go to the SRD here. Uh, wrong one. Item. <laughs> Spells. Oh, that's a great start. Great start. Uh, and we're going to be looking specifically at the spell level Levitate, but we can apply this for a whole range of different spells that... Pro, um, impose a condition on the target so I'm going to drag this levitate so this is the pure SRD version over here and drop it into my items now I could drop this spell directly onto Soriman's character to give him that innate spell casting ability and then make the amendments on Soriman so just as a quick reminder if you drag direct from the SRD onto the character and then edit that version of the spell it's only that version of the spell for Soriman. so if i then have another character who also gets the same spell levitate and i copy the spell across from the srd they won't have any of the changes we're going to make so we don't want to do that what we want to do is to have it as our own item that we can then edit uh, and then any time we want to give that spell to somebody. And I would recommend that if, when, if, you, if you're doing this a lot, um, create yourself a compendium of your customized spells. And that way you can pull from your own compendium knowing that they fully work and we can uh, crack on with it um, and it will copy across all your stuff. So I've just dragged that over from our items onto Soriman here. So let's see how this works normally. So Soriman's going to cast it. We're going to target this poor little goblin. We're going to click levitate. It's going to ask us if we want to cast a spell, which we do. And there we go. So it's automatically, so just point out this is obviously d and &D um, that we're in. We're in Foundry version 12. I also ought to point out that I'm currently on D&D version 3.2.1. I've not updated to the latest version at the moment because I have a live game and I don't want to mess with it. I want to get all my session zero stuff done. I want to make sure everything is solid and working before I mess with anything and I need to give myself time to roll back if there's a major problem or fix any little problems so just on that I'm on 3.2.1 okay so sorry about that little segue thought that was really important so we've got concentration on Soriman which is great and our card up here is asking for a constitution saving throw so we can say all right goblin make your constitution saving throw brilliant he rolled a 14 um, against what? We're not sure. Uh, we know it was against 11 because the spell says um, we take it from Soriman. Um, but it doesn't do anything. Okay, ends there. I then need to go in and say, oh, actually you've succeeded in that lovely, that does nothing happens. But Soriman's still concentrating on a spell that no longer, so he's immediately going to say drop that concentration because um, <laughs> it's not doing anything. Yeah. So it's not particularly smooth, is it? And then I've got to go into the goblin and go, I need to apply that hover status. Well, what we want to do is we want to automate that. We want to automate the rolling of that saving throw. And if he fails, apply that hover status effect straight away. Okay, because it's going to save all those clicks. just makes life easier. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to have to go back to uh, our old friend MIDI QOL. Um, which enables us to do some of that automation. Um, we don't need to use the whole MIDI suite. We only need to use the bits that we want to use. But it does enable us to do that part. So let's go to our mods, uh, manage my modules, and you'll see I've got zero mods in at the moment. But what do I need for this? Well, I'm going to need uh, MIDI QOL. If I can remember my alphabet, there we go, which is going to bring in socket lib, lib wrapper, and DAE. That's what we're going to need to do this. All right, zoom back in. I know this, this map is very blurry, it's got a horrible grid on it, so apologies for that, but uh, it's just used in my background for these testing things. All right, so now we've got those in place, I can go back to my 
levitate spell. Again, not the one on Sorryman. In fact, actually, I'm going to delete the one from Sorryman because that's not working the way we want it to. And I'm going to edit the one from my item list. So this is the core SRD one. Now, the only difference now is that we have this MIDI QOL tab that we didn't have before because we've now activated MIDI, of course. And we've got our DAE Dime uh, options at the top here because we've installed those as well. So what do we actually need to change? So we don't need to change anything on there. Our details tab is requesting the appropriate saving throw already, so we don't need to play with that. What we do need to do is to add the effect on that we want. So in this effects tab, we can add temporary, passive or, or inactive effects. We don't want to click that, we want to go to DAE. So I'm clicking on DAE there. And you can see it pops up this extra window. So what is the effect that we want? In this case, we want hovering. But look, you can see there's lots of different choices. Bleeding, blind, uh, blinded, burrowing, charmed, concentrating, etc. So choose whatever is going to be right for your spell. We're choosing hovering. And I'm going to click this little plus over here. And you can see we now have this status effect of hovering. Cool. And behind us, it has placed this in here. Okay, so hovering from the spell, for the source is levitate. I'm now going to edit this because this is going to default to say apply the effect to actor. So effectively apply it to the caster. We don't, <laughs> we don't want Sorryman to be levitating, so I'm going to untick that. We don't want that. Um, that's not necessary. So the next thing that we do want to do, though, is make sure that we are selecting our status condition we want to apply. And we're going to go for hovering, of course, if I can remember my alphabet. And while it looks like it's disappeared, there's a very small hovering just here. Um, so we know that that's going to want to apply hovering. And I want it to always show that effect icon. So it's going to show that icon on our target, well, <laughs> Or on the on the creature that this effect is going to affect. So it should be our target now because we've said we've got rid of apply to actor. So that's all we need to do on here. Now look at the stackable. Effects do not stack by effect name and effect origin. That's the default and that is what we would want for levitate. If somebody else tries to levitate the same goblin, he's not going to be levitating twice. He's just going to still be levitating. Um, but you have some options there if you want so increasing you know each stack increases the count by one if you've got some kind of effect that um, if you choose something like the spell bane to be stackable you know somebody casts bane ah oh, you get the penalty somebody else also banes the same creature they've now stack those penalties you could choose to do that okay so i'm going to submit changes and we can see that this effects tab now has hovering levitate uh, in there and we've just updated this to what we need it to be so we've now got the status effect but if I let's run this and see why it doesn't quite do what we want yet okay so sorry man uh, I need to open your character sheet uh, and I need to get my levitate spell uh, and we can target that goblin let's bring my chat back up and we can cast this so this is normal, we're going to do this, and because we've got MIDI QOL in, it's automatically rolling that saving throw for us. So the goblin has rolled that saving throw and he's passed it. So I'm going to cast it again because I want the goblin to fail, which of course is when we should be applying that status effect. I'm going to try again. <laughs> Come on, goblin. Right, there we go. Uh, and we now have that this status effect is applied to the goblin and he is hovering. Yep, so if I untarget him, you can see that we've got this hovering status effect here and Sorryman is concentrating. So that's it, that we've got that. Um, now, one thing to bear in mind is you might need to, go back to this item, on the MIDI QOL, QOL, <laughs> the MIDI QOL tab, you might find if you've got a slight issue with it applying this before rolling the saving throw, 
Okay, so if you've got it doing it the wrong way round and it's just going, oh, I'm applying the status effect before the saving throw has been resolved, you can, on Use Macros here, you can click this little plus icon and you can tell it to only run that. Uh, do, 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 loads and loads of options. If the target failed the saving throw, then you can get it to do the extra bit. So you might find you need that step. Obviously, I've just run it. Didn't need that step at all. Everything is cushy, as they say. So let's just double check here. We can break concentration for Sorimum. And the hovering has disappeared off the goblin. It's exactly what you would want to happen. We're not concentrating on that spell anymore. The goblin's going to plummet however far it is and take its damage. So let's just cast that again to make sure we're targeting our goblin. We're going to click levitate. We're going to cast that spell. This is going to default on for concentration for concentration spells as it should. And the goblin failed with a one and it's applied hovering again. Okay, going to break concentration. I'm going to keep doing this until the goblin passes. Of course, he's going to fail every one now until he passes his saving throw. There we go. So he's passed his saving throw. Sorryman is still concentrating, but the goblin is not hovering because he passed his saving throw. So that's all nice and easy when you know how. It's really difficult to kind of work out how to do these things. Um, but that's that's it. And now we can do that. We can do that with all sorts of other things. So the only other thing I wanted to do in this video was, and we've, we've been looking at it a little bit recently, is we can jazz this up, of course, if we want to. Absolutely don't have to. That is totally functioning. It's totally up to you. But of course, we can make that a bit more jazzy by if I edit, edit my modules uh, and I choose to go with um, my automated animations and sequencer. So it's going to pull in sequencer anyway. And I can choose to add on JB2A, whichever version you have of JB2A. I now have the patron version, but the free version has loads of effects in there. If you can't find the effect that I'm about to add on, it's because you've got a different version of um, JB2A. So I can go into my Levitate spell. I can click the AA button and I can go to my Customize. And here is where I can say, actually, I want an animation on Source. So in other words, when Sorryman casts it, am I going to play something on Sorryman? Let's uh, pick uh, the Magic Sign Transmutation as an example. We can click preview just to know what we're looking at. Um, I'm going to do. I'm going to do the rune. I think that's the rune complete. I'm going to do rune complete, uh, and I'm going to make it blue, which is the most air-like one. Easy peasy, uh, and I don't need to change anything here at all, which is fine. And the primary animation that is going to be on the target, I can change that to be anything I want. Uh, oh. Oh, animation type melee. I don't want that. I want on token. So, yeah, I don't know why it came up defaulting to uh, to melee. I want on token at the top here. Um, so now I can choose whatever I want to happen on the target, uh, and it can be anything. It could be particles. I think what's what's potentially a nice one. Energy. Um, I think it was energy. F one of these. I won't spend too long looking at these. There was one that I found that I thought was actually quite nice for it. Not those. Let's just pick Vortex. Let's not spend forever here. Um, and we'll pick Blue. Um, and we can do the loop of that. Blue, please. Thank you very much. And then I can submit it. Now, I have got options down here about target default self. I don't want to do that. Um, I can change that to target. It doesn't really matter. It's pretty good at working out what is what. Now, I've added that on. Uh, sorry, man. We'll open your character sheet again, please. Uh, first of all, I want to break that concentration. Thank you very much. This spell here has not been updated. I updated the one in my item list. So I'm going to delete that version of the spell, drag this across again. So now if I target this goblin, we're just going to add on those extra little effects. So uh, yeah, watch sorry, man, and the goblin. We should see both of them. There we go, we've got our sigil. Once that's finished, 
That's quite a long animation, so that's not a good choice, that one. Then we get our animation over here, yeah? And we've got that status effect applied. So, I again, you've got to play with those animations and work out what you want. I would remove that version of the one from a caster. It takes too long before it then plays that one. But that's how you can add the uh, to a spell, applying a condition effect on the target, and if you want to, apply an animation on top of that. So I hope that's been useful. Obviously, that's just levitate spell. You can do it with pretty much any spell that you need to. If you get really stuck and you've got a specific spell that you're trying to do it with um, and you can't work it out, uh, I'm going to be brave and say, let me know in the comments um, and we'll have a bash at it. Because some of them are straightforward. <laughs> some of them are really difficult and complex. And some of them are somewhere in the middle like this one. So I hope that's been really useful for you. Um, it, it just adds that little extra, doesn't it? It just saves a bit of time. Um, and adding those conditions is really nice. And actually, once you know how to do it, it's quite straightforward. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, take care. Leave a like, leave a comment, all that good stuff. If you're not subscribed, please do so. It really does help out the channel. We are pushing towards a thousand uh, subs now, which is incredible. Uh, and I've got a special little thing coming up for you very shortly to uh, celebrate 1,000 subscribers because we'll be there. We'll be there quite soon. Thanks, everyone. You take care. I will see you in the next one.